Goober Peace Accords, written in the summer of 1863, as the Confederate Army began receiving large bags of peanuts or goobers from the state of Florida as they were running out of every type of food. So peanuts, of course, they're called pindars or goobars, goobers down there. Two Confederate soldiers, after eating lunch one day, wrote a song called Goober Peas. It spread through the Confederate Army very, very quickly and became a favorite. After the war, these two guys were hunted down by a sheet music publisher in Atlanta, and they wanted to get all the words right, write the score the way these guys had had the melody in their head. And after they got done, they said, we need your names for the copyright. And these two gentlemen have my same view of this song. They said, there's no way you're putting our name on that. So. If you ever see the original sheet music to Goober Peas, and it's one of the few pieces that I need for my collection, it is written by Mr. A. Pindar and Mr. P. Nut. And that is the honest to God truth. Now, when I was a teenager, I had a Burl Ives album that had Goober Peas on it, and I didn't care for the song. And I'm sure a lot of you remember picking up the arm on your record player and moving it over to the next song so you didn't have to listen to it. I did that every time with that record so I didn't have to hear Goober Peas. When I got into the Civil War music business, everywhere I went, people said, play Goober Peas, and I thought, why? But people really love this tune. So I learned the thing. Lisa and I get to do the music at the State House Encampment every year. A few years ago, we were down there, and they brought in 2,000 school kids on Friday morning. And when they got off the bus, some smart aleck said, go find the old guy with the guitar and he'll teach you goober peas. We, we did this song 62 times in a row. So this is a sing-along, so turn in So it's only fitting we kick our program off today with, with the immortal, peas. one of my heartfelt favorites, <laughs> goober peas. You guys ready to sing? Sitting by the roadside on a summer day, chatting with my messmates, passing time away. Lying in the shadows underneath the trees Goodness how delicious Eating goober peas Peas, 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 peas Eating goober peas Goodness how delicious Eating goober peas That sounds beautiful. Puts tears in my eyes. <laughs> Just before the battle The general hears a row He says the Yanks are coming I hear their rifles now. He turns around in wonder, and what do you think he sees? The Georgia militia eating goober peas. Peas, 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 eating goober peas. Goodness, how delicious, eating goober peas. I think the song has lasted almost long enough. The rhyme is kind of silly and the words are mighty rough. I wish this war was over, free from rags and fleas. We kiss our wives and sweethearts and gobble goober peas. Peas, 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 eating goober peas. Goodness, how delicious, eating goober peas. Peas, 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 eating goober peas. Goodness, how delicious, eating goober peas. John Brown's Body. Great story to that one, too. That song started out in 1800. It was a Methodist hymn known as Brothers Will You Meet Us on Canaan's Happy Shores. The United States, of course, went through a huge religious awakening in the middle of the 19th century. Brothers Will You Meet Us on Canaan's Happy Shores was used by every denomination at what they called revivals or camp meetings. Very easy song because the minister would sing a line of it and then the congregation would sing that line back. Very easy to learn, it only had one line in each verse and they gave you all the words up front. And then of course it had the very catchy glory, glory, hallelujah chorus. When the American Civil War began in Massachusetts, there was the, I believe it was the 14th Volunteer Massachusetts Infantry that had a young private in it by the name of John Brown. And everybody picked on him. They asked him, didn't they hang you back on December 2nd, 1859? And they picked on him because of the John Brown raid on Harper's Ferry. John also had the distinction of being the worst soldier in the entire regiment. He didn't know left from right. He couldn't carry his rifle correctly. So they made up what they called the John Brown song. And they found out it was great to march and drill to. As they marched around Washington, D.C. singing John Brown this and John Brown that, everybody thought they were singing about the abolitionist. Pretty soon, verses were added about John Brown, the abolitionist. There was a verse added about Colonel, Colonel Elmer Ellsworth, 
who was one of the very first officers shot in Alexandria, Virginia for pulling down a rebel flag, and it was called Glory Hallelujah. Patrick Gilmore of When Johnny Comes Marching Home Again fame would write the score to it, and it would be published in sheet music form in August of 1861. This was by far the most popular song with the Union Army throughout the American Civil War. John Brown the Private did not have a long military career. He drowned in the Shenandoah River in June of 1862 while on picket duty. So he couldn't swim either. And it's a sing-along. John Brown's body lies a moldering in the grave. John Brown's body lies a moldering in the grave. John Brown's body lies a moldering in the grave. His soul goes marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. He's gone to be a soldier in the army of the Lord. Oh, yes, He's gone to be a soldier in the army of the Lord. He's gone to be a soldier in the army of the Lord. His soul goes marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His soul goes marching on. John Brown's knapsack is strapped upon his back. Oh, yes, dear. John Brown's knapsack is strapped upon his back. John Brown's knapsack is strapped upon his back. His soul goes marching on. The stars above in heaven now are looking kindly down. Stars above in heaven now are looking kindly down. The stars above in heaven now are looking kindly down on the grave of old John Brown. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His soul goes marching on. We have a request yes. here for Lorena. Lorena? Now this just happens to be our favorite Civil War song. When I met Lisa seven years ago, I had just picked up a book called The Sweetheart of the Civil War, written by Ernest Amurian. And Mr. Amurian wrote an entire series of songs about American gospel songs, Christmas songs, stage plays, Civil War songs, when he discovered the long drawn out story of Lorena that I could take you up to two o'clock with, he actually wrote a book called The Sweetheart of the Civil War, all about Martha Ellen Bloxham. On our third date, I had just picked up a copy of this book and I didn't have time to read it all, but I learned that Martha had passed away March 3rd, 1917. She was buried in Ironton. Lisa and I had business down in southern Ohio, or she did, and I went along with her, and I said, we need to stop by Ironton. Now, I had not told this young lady that I ran around on the weekends dressed like this with an old guitar singing not strange music, and I didn't tell her where we were going. We wound up in the cemetery in Ironton. We finally found Martha's grave. I got my Martin guitar out, and I sang Lorena to her. And this woman took pictures of me singing to a tombstone. I thought it was very romantic. And she's still here. <laughs> She probably thought eHarmony sent me yet one more loser. But anyway, we sang the song to her, and then a couple weeks later, I finished reading the little book, and I learned out how much Martha just absolutely hated Lorena. So. <laughs> the year 
Years creep slowly by Lorena The snow is on the grass again The sun's low down the sky, Lorena The frost gleams where the flowers have been But the heart throbs on so warmly now As in that summer day gone by The sun can never dip so low As down affection's cloudless sky song. The gentleman that wrote Lorena, J.P. Webster, would write in the Sweet By and By in 1863. That was a song that he was actually better known for than Lorena itself. In 1867, he would write another song that became a folk music standard in the United States called All Twine Mid the Ringlets. The Carter family called it the Wildwood Flower, and it became a huge hit for them in the late 1920s. The Sweet By and By, one of the most popular gospel songs written during the American Civil War by Joseph Philbrick Webster. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar, for the Father waits over the way. To prepare us a dwelling place there In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful shore We shall sing on that beautiful shore The melodious songs of blessed Our spirit shall sorrow no more Not a fire for this haven of rest In the sweet by and by We shall meet on that beautiful in the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. To our bountiful Father above, we shall offer our tribute of praise for the glorious gift of His and the blessings that hallow our days in 
the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by we shall meet on that beautiful shore we shall meet on that beautiful shore Dixie, ah. Okay. That's right. Yes. Marine Corps band showed up after the surrender. It was one of Lincoln's favorite songs. Of course, Dixie was written in 1858 by a Yankee right here in Mount Vernon, Ohio, Daniel Decatur Emmett, a member of Bryant's Minstrels for Dwight Dixie. It would become one of the biggest minstrel show hits prior to the American Civil War. In 1860, the New Republican Party would have an Illinois State Convention, and of course that was the convention that would propel Lincoln onto the national nomination. And Dixie was played constantly at this, this convention in Illinois. So Lincoln heard it all the time, and it very quickly became one of his favorites. When Jefferson Davis was elected in February of 1861, at his inaugural ball in Montgomery, Alabama, they played Dixie five times in a row. When Lincoln heard that, he said, well, the first thing those people have done is start stealing our music, because he knew it was written by a Yankee. Now, in 18 years of doing this, I've learned you do not go to North Carolina or Tennessee and tell some great big Confederate reenactor that Dixie was written by a Yankee. It's just not a smart thing to do. Sometimes you're just better off to sing and be quiet otherwise. But anyway, by the end of the Civil War, regimental bands North and South played Dixie constantly. It was just one of the biggest hits of the period. But there were also changes in the song lyrically. There was the original minstrel show version, a very well-written, eloquent Confederate version, and then just a wonderful Yankee version. So for those of you with Confederate heritage, please, when we get to the third verse, don't throw anything at me. Please. We did make peace with you with the second verse. So this is Dixie. I wish I was in the land of cotton Old times there are not forgotten Look away, look away, look away Dixieland, and Dixie's land Where I was born early on a frosty morning Look away, look away, look away Dixieland I wish I was in Dixie Away, away Dixie's land, I'll take my stand to live or die in Dixie. Away, away, away down south in Dixie. Away, away, away down south in Dixie. Here's the Confederate version. Southerns hear your country call you up, lest worth and death befall you. Two arms, two arms, two arms in Dixie. Lo, all the beacon fires are lighted. Let each heart be now united. Two arms, two arms, two arms in Dixie. Advance the flag of Dixie. Hurrah, hurrah. For Dixie's land will take our stand to live or die in Dixie. Two arms, two arms, conquer peace for Dixie. Two arms, two arms, conquer peace for Dixie. Here's the Union version of Dixie. Way down south in the land of traders, rattlesnakes and alligators come away, look away. Come away, Dixieland, where cotton's king and men are chattel. Union boys win the battles. Come away, look away, come away, Dixieland. Well, I'll go down to Dixie, away, away. The Dixie boys will understand. They should mind their Uncle Sam away, away. Way down south in Dixie, away, away, way down south in Dixie. Yes, sir. Battle Hymn of the Republic. Splendid tune. Of course, we did John Brown's body a little earlier. Julia Ward Howe was born in 1819. She married Dr. Samuel Gridley Howe in 1843. Of course, Julia would bore him five children. 
She became a Unitarian minister and activist. She was very active in abolitionism, civil rights in our country before the Civil War began. Dr. Howe, of course, was one of the people that would finance the John Brown raid on Harper's Ferry. He was what they called one of the secret six. Julia and, of course, Dr. Howe, when the war began, would help found the United States Sanitation Commission. It was their job to inspect camps and make sure soldiers were practicing good hygiene. On November 18, 1861, Julia would join her husband in Washington, D.C. Together they would be inspecting camps with a group of people and a company of soldiers marched by singing, John Brown's body lies moldering in the grave. And a friend of Julia's leaned over and said, that song is really disgusting. You could do a better job. The next morning in 20 minutes, she would write a poem she would call the Battle Hymn of the Republic. It was published in Atlantic Monthly in February of 1862 as a poem. Uh, Patrick Gilmore, the same guy that wrote the score to Glory Hallelujah, would write the score to the Battle Hymn. It would be published in August of 1862. Very quickly became a huge hit up north, became one of Lincoln's favorite songs. Theodore Roosevelt tried to make it our national anthem when he was president. It was voted down by Southerners in Congress. A lot of them still aren't very fond of this tune. But the Battle Hymn of the Republic, in my opinion, is probably one of the most popular songs to come out of the American Civil War. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. Hath loose the faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. He sounded forth a trumpet that shall never call retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of men before the judgment seat. Be swift, my soul, to answer him. Be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea with a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. He died to make men holy. Let us fight to make men free while God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Thank you.